Hooray for Hollywood, baby, come spend the day with me being a very big tourist in Los Angeles. Hey, ma'am, fam, I am here in Hollywood, California, and you know what? I booked a late flight today so that I could go on all kinds of adventures. And what kind of adventures do I want to go on? The touristy kind. I'm talking the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. I'm talking in and out Maybe I'm talking the Chinese Theater. Maybe I'm talking the Walk of Fame. Maybe I'm talking Universal Hollywood. Who's to say? All I know is I'm going to be the ultimate tourist, and I'm leaning into it. I wonder if I should get, like, the sunscreen on my nose and a fanny pack. Well, we're halfway there. Starting our day here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. This is a guided tour that includes checking out the active live Warner Brothers Studio. You're also going to see sets from where some of your favorite shows, such as Friends, Big Bang Theory, if that's your favorite show. It's not mine, but I do like Friends a lot. As well as possibly a live set of a show that they're currently filming. There's also tons of exhibits, props, museums. There's an entire Harry Potter section, which you know I'm excited about. There is a DC superhero section, tons of interactive activities, and I am ready to go. A couple of things about the tour. It is only for guests five and older, and anybody between the ages of five to 17 does need an adult chaperone with them. There's no videoing on the guided portion of the tour, so I will do some VO and some photo moments for that part. Um, however, you can video in the self-guided exhibits, which is like the Harry Potter and the DC superheroes. Tickets to the tour, if you get the standard ticket, are $69 on the Warner Brothers website. You can save a few dollars by booking it on Undercover Tourist. This is not hashtag an ad for them. I just like saving money and thought you might as well. Anyway, that's enough of the details. Let's get on with the tour. We're on with the show. We're in Hollywood made it in to the lobby, went through security, and I'm popping into the store. We're going to pop in here later for longer, but I'm not kidding y'all. I didn't wear a sweatshirt today because my friend Miss Wizarding World posted these house, Harry Potter house sweaters the other day, and I was obsessed with the Slytherin one, and I was like, I'm not going to wear a sweater and hope that it's here and I can buy it. Um, but let's start with some actual costumes from the film, worn by uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grant. We're starting strong. Also, look how much taller Rupert Grant is than, than Daniel. Wow, I didn't realize that. Here it is in all its glory. They have these house sweatshirts, and my house sweatshirt from Slytherin is like several years old at this point, so it's just kind of like a little bit worn, and I like that it's like this nice faded green, almost a greeny gray, and then this guy, the snake, like subtly put in there. So I've literally, I'm so excited that it's here. I'm so embarrassing. I can't reach them, and I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna need someone taller than me to help me reach this. And I literally just said, sir, can you? Can you help me get my sweatshirt? No? I've officially been influenced. Also, it's really soft and I'm very glad that I purchased this. We'll check out the gift shop more later. There's tons of other franchises in there. I saw Friends, I saw Batman, I saw Ted Lasso. There's other costumes. We'll be back, but for now, it's time to go on the tour. And by that, I mean get coffee at the most magical Starbucks I've ever seen. I don't know why this Starbucks has a gigantic version of the Triwizard Cup, but it does. And I really like it. So I'm going to get a coffee, and then it'll be time for the tour. Truly the most magical Starbucks ever, because also they had pumpkins still. So I'm going to sip on my coffee for a second and then get wait to check in. They did say I can bring my coffee on the tour, which makes it even better. So let's go. Moving through the lobby, we also have some statues of some OGs. Daffy and Bugs. And how many times a day do you think that he gets called Donald? Does that bother you, Daffy? I see it in your eyes. I know it bothers you. I'm sorry that happens to you. Also costumes from the mega successful superhero film Black Adam starring one Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now this is The Rock's costume and I feel like The Rock is bigger than this. Like this cannot be how big The Rock is. Maybe they don't have a mannequin big enough, or maybe the costume was really, really tight, like his shirts in the Fast and the Furious. But it is cool to know that DTRJ wants more of this. All right, getting ready to go on the tour, but first there's this room about the history of the Warner Brothers Studio and some of the hits that they've made over the years. It's got like a model of what the studio looks like with the water tower. There's a couple different sections. Here's the one on the Warner Brothers family, like the actual Warner Brothers. And there's some cool, Souvenirs? No, not souvenirs. Re props? No. Things? Heirlooms? I don't know. I need to drink this coffee. Uh, including Jack Warner's personal phone book. And the craziest part is that Walt Disney's phone number is right there. Wonder what would happen if I called that today. It's only five digits, so it would not work. Some cool props here in the television section as well. We've got JR's boots and hat from Dallas. 
which is exciting if you're a Dallas fan. I can't say that I am, but what I am a fan of is Friends. And Phoebe's guitar is right here. There's a whole Friends situation coming on on this tour. I'm really excited about it. You can sit on the couch and go to a replica of the cafe. So very excited about that. Looking forward to it in a few minutes. What else we got? Ooh, Lord of the Rings. We've got Maggie's boxing gloves from Million Dollar Baby and a microphone from the 1927 film The Jazz Singer. It is bonkers to me that that thing's almost 100 years old. Ugh, this stuff is so cool. All right, now it's on with the tour. First up on the guided tour was this town square where this library has been used in things like Young Sheldon, Ocean's 13, and most notably The Music Man. Then we went to the city streets. This has been Westworld, it's been Gotham City, it's been New York, and it was used in movies like The Greatest Showman, Rent, and the iconic Upside Down Spider-Man Kiss. We went into the jungle, which has been used for movies and shows like True Blood, but I was most excited to find out this is where they shot the iconic T-Rex chase scene in Jurassic Park. Yes, Jurassic Park is a universal movie. We're at Warner Brothers, but turns out all the studios share with each other, and I think that's nice. Next up, we drove through a neighborhood, and no, this isn't Wisteria Lane. They have used it for shows such as Call Me Cat. Currently, the Goldbergs, George Lopez show, Pretty Little Liars, but I was most excited to see the Fuller House house. Passed by this hospital that's been used in ER, you and the Dark Knight. And then we actually got to get off in the square. Fans of Gilmore Girls will recognize this gazebo. I took the selfie for Max because he loves that show. We also got to go inside this restaurant. Does anyone know what it is? It's Luke's Coffee Shop. Also shot in the square was the Muppet Movies and this church may be familiar to Pretty Little Liars fans. We also were able to walk around this house, which is actually two-sided. The first half was used in Gilmore Girls. The second half was used in Pretty Little Liars. And it's cool to see that one building can look like two completely different houses. And the last thing I was really excited about on the guided portion was the entrance to Abbott Elementary. I just started watching the show. It's absolutely hilarious. But what's really cool is while that looks like it's a hallway all the way going down, that's actually just a picture. Just the outside scene is shot here. Everything in the classrooms is shot in the soundstage. But doesn't that look like it's really a hallway? wrapped the guided portion of the tour. Now we're doing the self-guided part. There's a couple things in this first exhibit. There is a recreation of the Central Park coffee shop. Through here is another exhibit where you can actually see and sit on the couch from Friends as well as the Big Bang Theory set. Then after I'm done in here, I can head to the Friends Fountain and get my picture with the fountain from Friends and then onward to the Game of Thrones, very excited, Harry Potter and superhero exhibit. All right, here we go through the first exhibit. There's a bunch of movie props and costumes. Ooh, let's see. Let's start with the fun. Oh, Steve Urkel. I want to be so jealous he's at home right now because Alan loves sitcoms and he knows all the theme songs. I figured that out because we played a TV show theme song trivia once and he got every single one right. And I was like, when have you ever watched Family Matters? And he's like, I love Family Matters. So, a little behind the scenes about our lives. Full of secrets. Okay, I've been on the tour before and this is one thing that always boggles me because it's trying to give you an example of how many scripts get tossed out and only a small fraction of scripts go into pre-production and then an even smaller amount of those actually ends up making it into an actual film or tv show so you can see argo up at the top and then look at all of these other ones that are like nope here we're learning about the casting process so you see all these different headshots and then you can actually come look at some headshots of famous people who should we look at <laughs> oh, oh my god it's sophie's choice which of these two men that i'm slightly in love with do i click we're going zach efron he feels age appropriate drag it here to get a demo reel okay give me zach efron's demo reel please oh he's in the lucky one here oh here's leo oh growing pains remember that what a great show not this guy and here's the costume room <gasps> It's Michael Jordan's costume from Space Jam. Amazing. You've also got costumes in here from Mars Attacks. Y'all remember that movie? Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, look how tiny Constance Wu is. Oh my goodness. More Crazy Rich Asians, including The Wedding Dress. And this is from Selena. This is fun. The Jennifer Lopez movie. Also, look how tiny she is. Wow. One of the newer costumes, you've got... Austin Butler's costume from Elvis. Look at how detailed the gold threading and all the jewels and such are. 
What's cool about this tour too, again, I've done this tour before, completely different costumes last time I did it. So it's maybe not something you need to do every time you come to California, but if you're like me and you like this kind of stuff, it's fun to see what they've updated. Also, here's LeBron's outfit from Space Jam 2. I refuse to acknowledge this film. I didn't even see it because Space Jam 1 is such a pinnacle of my childhood and I heard Space Jam 2 was terrible. But hey, maybe it's great and I just missed out. I made it to the friend section where I'm actually gonna get to sit on the couch from Central Park, but I wanted to point out first quickly that they have a couple scripts here that are all signed by the cast. You've got the pilot, and it was actually called Six of One, and then you also have the last one, parts one and two, and they're all signed by your six friends. If you're a Friends fan, let me recommend the book I'll Be There For You. It's all about Friends and why it was such a cultural phenomenon and like why it was so successful. And there's some really interesting stuff in there, including like the impact Friends had after 9-11 and just like why the time that Friends came out was the perfect time for it to come out. And it, like, it's really, really interesting. Took my photo in Central Perk and the team were so kind because I said, do I have to sit on the couch or can I move to other places too? And he said, as long as there's no one behind you in line or you can keep getting in line, you can take pictures pretty much wherever you want except for on this one platform part. So I did a little photo shoot in Central Park. It was dream come true. Now I'm looking at some beautiful costumes. What do we have here? I'm thinking we're going into My Fair Lady. Yes. Oh, aren't these beautiful lace work and the dramatic hat. Oh, this is so cool. The gangsta film, see? I shouldn't do that. Uh, this was worn by James Cagney in the Roaring Twenties, and this was worn by Edward G. Robinson in Larceny, Inc. I love the pinstripes. We also have some beautiful gowns from some of Hollywood's most notable leading ladies. I'm talking Elizabeth Taylor, Joan Crawford, Betty Davis, Lauren Bacall, and Olivia de Havilland. And now the next big set, is home to some nerds. We got the Big Bang Theory set here. This is another one that you can sit in if you'd like to. I'm not a huge Big Bang Theory person, but it is always fun to see different sets and costumes and props, and you can take your picture on the couch, sit in Sheldon's spot, as well as the hallway with the broken elevator. Now we're moving our way into the special effects section. So I'm seeing miniatures from the Batman films, as well as this aircraft using the right stuff. But what I'm really intrigued by is this forced perspective lesson from Lord of the Rings. So it kind of sucks that I'm by myself, but I'm gonna see if I can do it anyway. What this set is showing is how they can use forced perspective to make things look different sizes. So thank you to Ken, the team member here who's got in the picture with me. Uh, but basically they have the person who's playing the Hobbit sit further away than the person that's playing the wizard so that the wizard looks bigger. They'll use props of different sizes. It's hard to tell, but the Hobbit's cup is actually much bigger. The wizard's is smaller so that the Hobbit appears smaller. And it's a cool trick that they use to make movies like Lord of the Rings in a practical way. Now I'm headed in for one of the add-on experiences you can do. You can upgrade, it's $39, and if you pay that, you can do a kind of live scene, either flying on a broomstick like in Harry Potter, driving the Batmobile like in The Dark Knight, uh, or on a Have You Seen This Wizard poster like in Azkaban. So I'm obviously gonna fly on a broomstick now, and I'll show you the final results. Okay, so here's your daily reminder to read what you're purchasing. What I purchased um, for $39 was two of the green screen photos. So like they took pictures of me on the broom, but they also took a video. The video is not included with what I purchased. It is also $40, um, but the team member was very kind and said they could refund the picture thing and just sell me the, the video thing. Is a video of me flying on a broomstick on a green screen worth $40? I don't know, kind of, it's hilarious. So funny for me. Overly expensive probably, but hilarious if you're a big Dark Knight or a Harry Potter fan. There's a few more exhibits in this area, all about sound and visual effects and how certain things come to life. So we're gonna check those out and then we're gonna keep moving because we got a lot more to see. Lighting effects, clothing, <laughs> Oh, I see you're a Harry Potter fan. I am. Thank you. All right. When it's time to record, you're going to hear some countdown beeps, and your script will appear at the bottom of the screen. Okay, I'm going to okay, be Harry. Okay, picture is up. I'm Harry. Get ready to record. Okay. Happy 
Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. What are you wearing? This is gonna be art. Happy Christmas, Ron. <laughs> what are you wearing? Oh, we mum made it. Looks like you got one too. I've, I've got presents. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbed myself a coffee from the Central Perk. I went with the Ross, which is a flat white. I don't really like Ross that much, but his coffee looks the most my jam. In addition to the themed coffees, they are just a regular coffee shop. They've also got some different sandwiches, snacks, pizza, etc. Um, but I've got big lunch plans, so I'm just going to take my coffee now and enjoy it while looking through the Friends gift shop area, which I'm primarily excited about because they have props from the show. They've also recreated it to feel like Central Perk in here so you can take some fun pictures, but I'm all about costumes and props like this outfit worn by one Phoebe Buffet. Got some Ross and Rachel looks right here. Monica. This is the outfit she wears when she does karaoke and she is like, everyone likes me. And then Chandler points out it's because her top is see-through. You've also got some recreations in here of Monica and Rachel's apartment and other sets. So you could take some really fun photos in here if you wanted to. Mayhaps my favorite props are the ones up here. You've got the turkey, Phoebe's bicycle, Hugsy, Joy's bedtime penguin pal, smelly cat litter, and most importantly, Glynis. That's not Gladys, that's Glynis. And uh, she is a nightmare. Found my way into Chandler and Joey's apartment. They even have the bark loungers here if you want to sit in those. Here's the final of our six character costumes. Joey and Chandler. Gotta say, I didn't know Chandler would be that tall compared to Joey. I always kind of thought they were the same height. There's also more Friends merchandise than I could have ever dreamt possible in here. Everything from kitchenware to apparel to bags to spirit jerseys. I really like this hat, but I'm gonna see if they have it at the main store and I'll consider that a sign to buy it. We made a pit stop at the Real Friends Fountain. Now this is not where they shot the Friends opening, but it is the Real Fountain that's been relocated here. Took some pictures with the fountain and now I am at the last stop on the exhibit, the Action and Magic exhibit. So this primarily features DC superhero movies and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Obviously you know which one I'm more excited about, but actually as a surprise, they have a Game of Thrones exhibit here right now and I love Game of Thrones. So I'm very excited to see all the Game of Thrones props and costumes over here, but we're gonna start with DC. Now, I'm I'm personally not a huge DC superhero movie fan. I haven't seen a ton of them. I'll be the first to admit that. I've seen a lot of Batman, but not really much else. I will say, however, that The Dark Knight is one of the best, if not the best superhero movie made of all time. I feel like that's that's not unreasonable to say. So it's really cool to see that they've got Heath Ledger's Joker costume right here, which is also kind of giving me the chilly willies considering what happened. All right, now this is awesome. You don't have to be a diehard fan to appreciate the fact that the Batmobile is right here. This is from the 2022 Batman, as in uh, the one that starred Edward Cullen. And there's his costume. Oh my gosh, this is Zoe Kravitz's costume. She is a tiny human being. Now, if there's one DC comic I'm interested in watching, it's gotta be Wonder Woman. Now you may know Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, but I know her as Giselle as part of the family in the Fast and the Furious series. But everyone I've talked to says Wonder Woman, the first one is awesome and a really good like female superhero moment. So I'll probably watch that one at some point. Also, we've got Cal Drogo, I mean Aquaman's costume. Can't blame me, he's got Game of Thrones over there too. We've got Wonder Woman again, Batman, Superman, Henry Cavill, Superman, The Flash, and The Cyborg. So this is all Justice League. We've also got Shazam here, Zachary Levi. Oh sweet, an Aquaman photo op. I only wanna be Aquaman if I can have a pet shark. These vehicles are pretty awesome. They've got the Batmobile from the 1989 Batman. They've got the Batwing from Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice from 2016. They've also got the Batpod. I didn't know it was called that, but hilarious. That's from The Dark Knight. This stuff is really cool. And even if it's not your favorite movie, you probably know who Batman is. And it's just cool to see these real costumes and these real props. Tons of Batman costumes. Here's uh, Batman's outfit from Dark Knight Rises. I now wanna download Batman, the trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy, the Christian Bale trilogy to watch on my flight. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, that's a nightmare. Um, anyway, there's an Aquaman monster in there. Wow, he was, wow. Okay, anyway, let's go look at the Game of Thrones stuff. 
paws though. I think the Superman cape collection is very cool up there. Let's see, those are different capes from left to right. We've got Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, Superman Returns, and Man of Steel. So three different looks, all the same cape. Borrowed them from Doctor Strange, probably have the same uh, fashion designer if I had to guess. Someone's yelling in the comics right now like, that's MCU and this is DC and they can't cross over. And it's like, I get it, it's a joke. Um, also, we've got a set from the Daily Planet right here. Geeking out big time over the Game of Thrones stuff. I love Game of Thrones, a little behind the scenes. Game of Thrones was the last like show that came out besides Stranger Things that I was really, really excited about. And it's because every Sunday, my friends would hang out all day long Sunday. We'd go to brunch or we'd go to the pool or to somebody's house. We'd hang out literally for like 15 hours and we'd end our Sunday nights by watching Game of Thrones all together. We had watch parties, we had themed parties. So it was like a really fun show for me, but it was also a really social like moment with my friends that I will cherish. Um, so to see these costumes is so cool. Let's see who we have here. This was uh, Eddie Airy as Sir Gerald Hightower. Not thrilled by that, but I am thrilled by this chest here. That was Daenerys's. And speaking of Daenerys, here is a costume worn by the amazing Amelia Clark. Daenerys, one of my favorite characters. Do feel like the ending was rushed. My Game of Thrones fans will agree with me. I think the ending felt rushed. We needed another season if we were going to turn Danny into the Mad Queen. Um, I kind of wish we didn't do that, but you know, I didn't write the show. We've got a dragon skull right here. Ugh, this guy. Viscerous. One of the worst. Am I right? Oh, also the dragon collar. I didn't notice that at first. This dude. Absolutely trash human being. But, uh, and then here we have Ramsey from The Fast and the Furious. I'm just kidding. It's misandry, but she is also in the family. Oh, and here is uh, what Khal Drogo used to crown this guy. So, you know, it's sweet, sweet justice at the end, wasn't it? And there's a bunch of props here as well. Let's see, we have a raven scroll that was sent to Jon Snow by Tyrion. We have some dragon jaw pieces, different dragon pieces. You've got a Targaryen banner here. You know what house do you guys think you're in? I think I would like to be a Targaryen, but I think I'm a Lannister. It's kind of like how I want to be a Samantha, but I'm probably a, unfortunately a Carrie. I feel the same way. I'm probably a Lannister. You've got more dragon eggs right here. Ooh, like jewelry and accent pieces worn by Danny. I love that. Whose knife is this? This knife was uh, sent to help Bran most boring character on the show, unless I'm talking about Sam, am I right? Probably not, someone's gonna yell at me in the comments, but that's fine. Um, let's see, this was worn by Daenerys. Of course it was, look at those beautiful dragon accents on top. Ugh, it's just so cool, and the detail of this stuff. And this is Oathbreaker, oh my God, oh my God. And now I am ready to nerd out big time in the Wizarding World section. Walking in, starting strong, you've got the Ford flying call that they use in Chamber of Secrets right up top. Oh my gosh, nerd, 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 nerding out. It's the, it's the Marauder's Map. The real Marauder's Map. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You can get sorted. Let's go see if the hat knows. The hat knows. I would love to get sorted. There's nothing hidden in your head the sorting hat can't see. So try me on, and I will tell you where you ought to be. Ah, shrewd and sharp. Slithery! Well, I got sorted. The sorting hat knew. I also went and pulled up some mandrakes and herbology. <laughs> now I'm headed to do some other photo op areas and some props. And what I'm loving is the wall decor in here. It's all blueprints of different sets like Harry Potter's Cupboard Under the Stairs. Took some fun photos here in the Dursley's living room. The picture makes it look like the letters are swirling all around you. You can also go into Harry's Cupboard Under the Stairs, take a picture in there, and they have so many props in there, including his little soldiers. More amazing props like Harry's spectacles from Sorcerer's Stone, look how tiny they are. And also his letter from Professor McGonagall inviting him to Hogwarts. 
Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you've been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I'm going to cry. Um, and now I'm going to cry for a different reason. And it's because this is the real Dobby. And I love Dobby. I think he's an amazing character. I think he's better in the books. They cut a lot of Dobby out. Um, but I got to say, this is staring into my soul. And it's making me a little uncomfortable moving into potions class but before i do the potions props from half-blood prince oh that's so cool it's the advanced potion making book i love that and a cauldron these are all from half-blood prince which makes sense that's a very potions focused film but we get to make a potion now okay all right it looks like we are making an antidote to common poison so add one bazaar bezel add a dash of standard ingredient okay <gasps> it's bubbling oh my gosh unicorn horn <gasps> magic and mistletoe berry <gasps> look i made a potion and it's smoking i'm a wizard onto wands they have wands from several important characters draco bellatrix voldemort dumbledore harry hermione ron and mcgonagall but then i also can do a wand choreography lesson with the wand choreographer hi i'm paul harris and i was the choreographer of the battle scenes in harry potter and the order of the phoenix along with the director david yates i created and developed the physical language for fighting with the wand known as wand combat so now let's try move number one Bring the wand forward of the head and whip it back. Stay low, bring your left side across and your left arm to protect your center. And the last section, it looks like Fantastic Beast time. Um, let's see, if I look at the wall, I can identify different creatures. So it says, touch the pages of the book to activate the wall. So I like Nifflers, so I want to activate the Niffler. There he is. Oh, that's cute. Getting that goal, baby. In this exact moment, I'm pretending that this is the book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, like in the universe bow chuckle, and not the films. Where's the bow chuckle? Oh, there he is. This is cool. Also, there's creatures outside the shed. Okay, the photo off of popping out a new suitcase is very cute. Last time I did a video that had Harry Potter, I mentioned my dislike of Fantastic Beasts. There were a lot of comments like, why don't you like Fantastic Beasts? I guess, you know how like Star Wars people feel about the new trilogy? How they're like, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't stay true to the original story. It like breaks canon. That's why I don't like Fantastic Beasts. I think they made a lot of jokes in the new fan service that make no sense timeline-wise. Like, it would have been impossible for Minerva McGonagall to be professor at the same time Dumbledore was a professor as shown in the videos. I think they added some really weird stuff about, like, Dumbledore having a surprise child. Like, just... <laughs> this is not the story anyone wanted. I'm interested in the Dumbledore backstory, the Grindelwald situation, but, like, that's not what these even are. No one asked for America Hogwarts. Just not for me. I think they're bad. I don't just think they're like a little not as good as the, the original stories. I genuinely think they're bad, especially the last one. You know, and it's like, you know, I'd, I would love to continue the legacy forever. I'd love a show on maybe like the Marauders. I would love to see more of that story come to life. But I just simply cannot with Fantastic Beasts. It makes me sad because I would love to go be, be happy to go back to Hogwarts and there was a, uh, the whole fate of the world was decided by a deer. I just, ugh. Okay, we gotta move on before I have a full meltdown. We're in our final exhibit now where you can hold a real Academy Award. Before we do that, there's a few more props, some cool ones I wanna point out. There's the trombone from the Music Man. You've got a helmet from Troy. Oh my gosh, this is Inger Berman's costume from Casablanca. That's amazing a variety of different Emmys and Oscars for different things. Here's one for an Outstanding Limited Series for Roots. You've got Batman the Animated Series. My Fair Lady Best Picture, that is awesome. So cool. Oh, and here's Humphrey Bogart from Casablanca. Oh, 
Sorry, Humphrey. The Crucifix from The Exorcist. That's an amazing movie. Also, sad because this is Chadwick Boseman's costume from 42. ID cards from ER. I just, I could watch. Oh, here's the Legos from the Lego movie. Oh my goodness. And Michelle's honeybee uniform from Full House. Geeking out. And like any good tour, we end back up in the gift shop. Do a quick look-see at the main sections. Starting with just like a general Warner Brothers section. Moving into some Gilmore Girls goodies. I found the perfect take home. So Max, it's Alan, and I watch Fuller House. Everyone's equally excited about it. I definitely didn't force them to watch it at all. But anyway, I found this Fuller House hat and I was like, should I buy this? Because it's funny. It's on clearance for $6. So I'm buying three of them and they're going to be so excited. <laughs> Friends merchandise, though not everything that they had up at the little cafe. So if you see something, you might want to grab it. For example, I wanted this hat I saw that was just a purple hat with a yellow frame. And I didn't buy it. And I should have because they don't have it here. Big Bang merch. Looney Tunes. DC Comics, seeing tons of Batman and Wonder Woman, and I almost said Spider-Man, nope, Superman. And of course, there's tons of Harry Potter merchandise. Now, some of this I've seen in the parks, some of this I've seen on websites like Cakeworthy or Box Lunch, but there is some, like the sweatshirt I bought earlier, here's the Gryffindor version, that says Warner Brothers Studio Tour in it. So there are a few exclusive things, but some of this other stuff you may be able to find elsewhere, and then you could probably get it home easier, just as something to keep in mind. I know I just said I'm buying a Fuller House hat, but look at this very good Hogwarts hat. It's like pastel tie-dye. It's very on brand for me. Oh, that is so cute. Well, that's a wrap here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. I think this tour is so much fun. It can take two hours. You get an hour guided and then you can spend an hour doing the other stuff. For me, it takes much longer because I take videos and pictures and really like looking at everything. If you're a Harry Potter fan, a DC Comics fan, a Friends fan, just like a movie and TV fan in general, it's really, really cool. Great way to add on something uh, for like a half day experience to maybe your Universal Studios Hollywood trip. But for now, I am hungry. So calling a lift and we are headed to get an iconic burger. Made it to my lunch spot, the famous In-N-Out. Now, I've only been to In-N-Out like twice in my whole life. I didn't get it, not gonna lie to you, but I was told I did it wrong. So I reached out to the man fam on Discord. If you're not in our Discord yet, join in the fun. And I said, what do I order at In-N-Out? They let me know to order a double-double animal style and a Neapolitan shake. It's some kind of secret menu situation that everyone else in the world knows about except me. So I'm gonna try this right now and see if it will change my opinion on In-N-Out. That's not gonna lie. As of right now, I think Whataburger's better. In and out complete. And I'm sorry, y'all. This is gonna cause controversy. I don't think In and Out's that good. I think it's pretty overrated. <laughs> Please don't yell at me. But I just felt like the fries were not good. The shake was good, I'll give them the shake. The burger's fine, but I think Whataburger is the superior fast food burger. And honestly, there's not one part of me that would actively search for an In-N-Out over a McDonald's, which is gonna get, yeah, gonna get, gonna get people heated in the comments. But like, I like Big Macs just the same as that burger, and at least I'm gonna get bomb fries. So, sorry, anyway. I am now walking a short five or so minute walk to continue the ultimate touristy day. I must have taken a wrong turn because somehow I ended up at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Orlando, Florida. Now obviously I'm in the most touristy part of Los Angeles, right outside Grauman's Chinese Theater, the real Chinese theater that the one in Hollywood Studios is based on. Also right here on Hollywood Boulevard are famous theaters such as the Dolby Theater and the El Capitan. This is also where the legendary Walk of Fame is located. So I have made a list of 12 of my favorite celebrities and I'm on a quest to find their star. Now, when I say a quest, I mean I looked up on the official website where what each one is located because this thing is quite long. It stretches for many, many blocks. So I made that list and we are off to find some of my faves. Now, when making my list of 12 people, I thought about things that were important to me, movies I like, franchises I like, etc. <laughs> and then I found someone that related to each of those things. And I'm on the quest for the first one right now. While I'm walking, let me tell you about a few people that I am shocked do not have a star 
on the Hall of Fame. James Earl Jones, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Emma Watson. Also Chadwick Boseman. None of them have a star. And that makes me sad, because I personally think all those people should have a star. All right, here's the first one I was on the quest for. Winona Ryder. She's the only person I could find from Stranger Things that had a star. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So, shout out to her. Also, not on my list, but cool that they're right here. Oh my god, a car. What is happening? This place is crazy. I'm, I'm, what is happening? Just a man walking down a street controlling a car. Oh. Anyway, the Hoff. Patrick Swayze. Sonny and Cher. And Meryl Streep. All right here. Now, if you followed along when I watched all the Fast and the Furious movies for the first time, you will know I was not a big fan of Dom Toretto, so Vin Diesel was in no way on my list. But I'm still going to text a picture of that to Max for the family. So it's Aldana, Aretha Franklin. It is very fun to walk down this. Benedict Cumberbatch. You know what? I'm going to send that to Alan because if Alan loves anything, it's Doctor Strange. And he will appreciate that. Weird Al. Oh, Alan Arkin, Tom Cruise, Snow White, like the character? Ooh, Hans Zimmer. He did one of my favorite movie scores of all time. John Favreau, Snoop, D.O. Double G, Jimmy Kimmel. Okay, I'm almost here at the El Capitan. And one of the ones I'm most excited about, it's not Michael Eisner, but he's here, should be around here. <gasps> Found it. It's Tim Allen's. You may know that Buzz Lightyear is my favorite Disney character of all time, so I'm considering this his star. Here's Alan Menken's too. Not on my list, but you know, I can't help bonus, pointing out bonus ones. Jerry Bruckheimer, also. Should I go to the movies? I wonder how much longer I have till my flight. Like, should I go see Ant-Man right now? That'd be cool. I take back every star I had written down on my list because this is the best star on the Walk of Fame. The Muppets. Wait, now I found Tinkerbell and Winnie the Pooh and Donald Duck, which leads me to believe Mickey will have one, so I'm adding him to my list. I didn't realize non-people could have one. Also, this is cool. Roy O. Disney, Walt's brother, amazing, and Chris Pratt. Star-Lord, Owen Grady, Andy Dwyer himself, and Paul Rudd. Oh my gosh, Ant-Man! Slash Bobby Newport. Next one on my list, DTRJ, The Rock himself, Dwayne Johnson. Let's see who else we can find. Oh, Jackie Chan. There's another one over here on my list. According to my recent Googling, that Mickey should be around here. Sending MKNA to my adult best friend who we have spent many evenings watching Mary Kate National movies when we did our college program. Yes, we're adults. We met as adults and it's fine. Simba. Oh, here's another one on my list. Peter Jackson, director of Lord of the Rings. I originally searched for Elijah Wood, no dice. Sir Ian McKellen, no dice. But Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, one of my favorite franchises. Not to brag, but I saw Return of the King 12 times in theaters, so. Next one on my list, Harry Potter himself, Daniel Radcliffe. I looked for Emma Watson, because Hermione is my favorite of the main characters, but she didn't have one, weird. So I'll go with, I'll go with The Boy Who Lives. That's another good one. Ooh, Celine Dion, Michelle Pfeiffer, Matt Damon. All good, all good. Oh, here's another good one. Indiana Jones. Another one on my list, Martin Scorsese. I don't know if I've shared this, but The Departed is one of my favorite movies of all time. Behind like Jaws and Titanic, it's probably number three if you take out Disney. Um, so had to find that one, because he directed it. And speaking of Jaws, if I had to pick the stars I was most excited to find, this would have been one of the two. Steven Spielberg right here, director of Jaws, my favorite movie ever, as well as Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, countless other amazing films. So excited to find him. Still looking for Mickey Mouse though. Had to backtrack a little bit to look for this one. I am looking for the star of my favorite TV show of all time, Target acquired Amy Poehler, Star Parks and Recreation, my favorite TV show of all time. I aspire to be Leslie Nope when I grow up. Found the next one on my list, Mary Poppins herself, Julie Andrews. Also, as a note, 
If you come down here, you're going to see a lot of performers dressed as Spider-Man, Mickey Mouse, Pennywise. I even saw somebody dressed like Michael Jordan challenging kids to a dribble contest. These people are going to ask you if you want to take selfies with them or if you want to take pictures with them. They want money. None of these people just want to let you take a picture with them. So if you take a picture with them, prepare to give them money. I personally try to avoid eye contact. Next star on my list, Sir Elton John. My favorite Disney film ever is The Lion King, and of course he wrote the music. Taking a quick pause right here, and let's do a rapid fire look at some cool handprints right here. C-3PO and R2-D2. Harrison Ford, Emma Watson, Daniel Radcliffe, and Rupert Grint. Michael Jackson, John Wayne. Not handprints, but a beautiful dedication to Carrie Fisher. Sandra Bullock, The Rock, and Vin Diesel. How do you think Vin Diesel feels about being under The Rock? Jack Nicholson, and a beautiful one to end on, Marilyn Monroe herself. I wonder if we were hand twins. <gasps> oh my God, we are. Gentlemen prefer blondes. Marilyn Monroe, we're basically the same. All right, well that was fun and kind of weird to be at the Chinese theater when I go to the fake one on a regular basis. Gotta say, the fake one looks a little nicer. And there's no one dressed like a pirate wench calling me blondie and asking if I want to take a picture while she smells like um, plants. Anyway, back on our star crawl. Hey, ma'am, fam, you've been Armageddon. All right, here we go. Here's Mickey's. Very deserving, I think. King of Pop, Michael Jackson. This music is my favorite of all time. This one may seem a little out of left field, but Titanic is one of my favorite movies of all time. When I was looking for Leo, I discovered he doesn't have a star, weirdly. I looked for Kate Winslet. She has one, but it's like... 25 minute walk away so I wasn't gonna go all the way there so then I decided to go for one of my favorite secondary characters who shares my namesake the unsinkable Molly Brown portrayed by Kathy Bates there's only one star left on my list and you may be able to guess who it is I'm passing great people I'm passing Hugh Jackman I'm passing Scarlett Johansson Shrek wild but there's one big one left on my list dun, 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 dun on a quest for a star. Hitchcock, that's a good one. Not the one. John Stamos, Dick Van Dyke, those are good too. But not the one I want. Not the one I'm looking for, but this is very sweet. Raquel Welch actually just passed away, I believe yesterday from when I'm filming this. And so her star has got lots of tokens. Very sweet. Big Bird, Debbie Reynolds, Patrick Stewart, all great. Richard Dreyfus from Jaws. You know, Still not who I'm looking for them. Uh, <sighs> Chevy Chase, Michael J. Fox, Mary Tyler Moore, The Simpsons. Where is this one? I just looked at my map and it, I think I'm going the right way. Well, took long enough. But here we are. Walt Disney. Now I was about to leave and then I thought, did I really go to Hollywood Boulevard? If I didn't do a tacky tourist attraction, I don't think I did. And I've got a Madame Tussauds in Orlando. I got a Ripley's Believer not in Orlando. But I saw this one when I was walking around the stars. It's called Icons of Darkness. And I looked it up online and it's a bunch of props from things like Harry Potter, The Grinch, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Lord of the Rings, Marvel, right up my alley. So we're just gonna do it. You know what? We're gonna be spontaneous and just go into this exhibit that I know nothing about until this minute. All right, well, there's no video on the tour, photos only, so let's roll it. That museum was actually really cool. It was about a 30 minute guided tour and it was one person's personal collection of Hollywood memorabilia from costumes to animatronics to props. It was really, really cool. My tour guide was really knowledgeable and you could tell really cared a lot about this stuff and it was a passion project for him. No video on the tour, but you could take pictures. So here's a few of my favorites with a few of my favorite fun facts I learned while on the tour. As a pop culture nerd, I loved this. Let's get into it. Starting with Batman costumes. These Batman suits weighed 45 pounds, but Mr. Freeze was 75, so who had it worse? Maybe Catwoman, because Michelle Pfeiffer had to get powdered into the costume and then vacuum sealed so that there was literally no air left in it. But most of all, I was excited and a little creeped out to see this costume genuinely worn by Heath Ledger as the Joker. One of my favorite things in the exhibit, though, were these dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, one of my favorite film franchises. You've got the Spinosaurus and the Pterodactyl from Jurassic Park 3. You've got T-Rexes. You have one of the original Clever Girls from the kitchen scene in the original Jurassic Park. And you've got the Vegiosaurus that sneezes on Lex and Dr. Alan Grant and Tim when they're in the tree, which, fun fact I learned, they didn't actually know that was going to happen. So that was a genuine reaction. 
You have a Wicked Witch of the West costume, which I cannot believe a person just owned in their home, knowing how iconic Wizard of Oz has become. Lord of the Rings fans, I geeked out over seeing this Ukai. This is the one that kills Boromir and Fellowship in the Ring, but Aragorn does get him in the end. Maybe Lord of the Rings isn't your thing and you're a Star Wars nerd. Don't worry, they have you covered there too. Big Star Wars collection. The coolest things, in my opinion, though, were this real Darth Vader helmet and costume from the original film, as well as this Stormtrooper costume. And you can see me standing next to it and how short it is because that's the one Mark Hamill wore uh, when he was asked if he was a little too short to be a Stormtrooper. Turns out the answer is yes. Haven't seen the film, but I had to stand next to the alien queen from one of the alien films. This is one of the biggest puppets ever used on film, and she's literally twice as big as I am. They also had props from The Mask, The Exorcist, Beetlejuice, E.T., Mrs. Doubtfire, Back to the Future, Edward Scissorhands. These are actually one of only four remaining pairs of the scissors. Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Loved seeing this one. And The Night King from Game of Thrones, which really creeped me out. The experience ended with a little bit of Marvel. Some of the highlights were a Peter Parker Spider-Man costume worn by Tobey Maguire. You've also got Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, also worn in the Tobey Maguire films, an arc reactor from Tony Stark, and a Mjolnir, which actually weighed 25 pounds and was made out of a dumbbell. So turns out you actually do have to be kind of worthy to carry that around set all day. And now I think I have been in this area for far too long, and I just caught a lift to take me back to a different Hollywood. Universal Studios Hollywood, that is. And we're at our last stop of the day, Universal Studios Hollywood. Now, prior to Super Nintendo World, this park closed around six most days, but because Super Nintendo World opened today, actually, they are staying open till 10. So I'm headed in to maybe ride one ride, my favorite ride in the park that I have not been able to show on video yet. Maybe get a snack or a drink. Might as well hang out here instead of sitting in traffic to LAX. <laughs> now, Super Nintendo World is the reason I came to California for this trip. In the timeline of right now, when I'm shooting this, I actually was in California about three weeks ago with Alan. It's when we shot all of our Disney 100 videos. It's when we did our annual pass holder preview of Super Nintendo World. And then we got home and were graciously invited by Universal Studios Hollywood to attend the grand opening event for Super Nintendo World. I'm sorry, Dracula's right here. Hello, Dracula. I'm good, how are you? Thank you. Oh, he's licking his lips, I'm uncomfortable. Um, this park is bizarro. I thought this is way too cool of an opportunity to pass up, have never been invited to something with Universal Studios Hollywood before, so super excited. And uh, like Miley Cyrus told me to, hopped back on a plane to LAX. Max and I had an awesome time at Media Day for Super Nintendo World. Want to share a few highlights with you right now. For starters, we went back to the Toadstool Cafe. They have added some new items since we came a few weeks ago, including a short rib special and the cutest mushroom soup you've ever seen. We also had a great time playing the mini games that give you the keys. And if you play three of four of them, you then get to step foot into the Bowser Jr. castle and try and defeat Bowser Jr. to win the golden mushroom. I also got the chance to meet Princess Peach at the media party, and the characters are super cool and interactive and actually talk to you. Plus, Max and I had a great time looking for more Easter eggs, like these little Pikmin we found with the binoculars, collecting more coins, and just getting more stamps in the app. Super Nintendo World is currently operating with a virtual queue. Now, that's not for Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge the Ride. That's just to get into the land. It's a really small land, and to limit capacity, they are doing a virtual queue that you cannot enter until you arrive at Universal Studios Hollywood. So if you are visiting soon and you would like to go into Super Nintendo World, you're going to want to get here early and join that virtual queue as soon as possible. You have to be at Universal Studios Hollywood to join the virtual queue. You'll click reserve, you'll click how many are in your party, and then you will select a time from what's available. If there are not any available when you get to the park, keep checking back because more times could pop up. But I predict this will be a very popular land for quite some time. So getting here early is your best bet. We've done a whole video review of Super Nintendo World, which we will link for you. It's a really, really cool land, really fun, highly recommend it. Whether you are a gamer or not, this land is delightful. But for us for now, we are headed to, once again, my favorite ride in this park. And you're gonna be surprised 
when I tell you it's a water ride. Yes, it is I, Molly. I have not been kidnapped. The body snatchers don't have me, but I am very willingly walking onto a water ride at night. This is Jurassic World The Ride. Here at Universal Studios Hollywood, they revamped their Jurassic Park River Adventure to be Jurassic World. So this includes the Mosasaurus. This includes Blue. This includes the Indominus Rex. And I'm telling y'all, the Indominus Rex is one of the coolest animatronics I've ever seen. I like this ride so much that it is cold right now and I'm gonna go sit in the front row without a rain jacket just to get a good shot of the Indominus Rex. Now it has a 42 inch height requirement, so keep that in mind. I rode it the first day I got in LA in the front row. I didn't get too wet, a little wet on the top half. Max and I rode it and we sat in like the fourth row and we didn't really get wet at all. So it can vary by your seat, but here we go. I'm so excited. I love this ride so much. Let's go. ride is truly so awesome. I, I've never been and probably will never be that hype for a water ride ever in my whole life. And I did get a little wet sitting in the front uh, when you go down the little drop into the into the inside section kind of. That actually got me more wet than the main drop at the end. So my legs are a little wet and my butt's a little wet from sitting in the seat but nothing terrible and totally worth it. And I somehow liked it even more at night and I'm not kidding that Indominus Rex at the end She's a little temperamental. She doesn't always work. She didn't work when Max and I rode it yesterday, um, but it's amazing. It's one of the best animatronics I've ever seen. It's awesome. Now I'm headed back up to the upper lot. If you watched my first video on Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, not the one at Super Nintendo World, I talked about how this park is a little bizarro because you have to ride up these like mall escalators essentially to get between uh, the upper lot which is where you've got Wizarding World of Harry Potter and Simpsons and the Studio Tram Tour and the like Illumination Despicable Me pet section and then the lower lot you have to take four of these really steep escalators down the Hollywood Hills to get to Super Mario World, The Mummy, Transformers, and Jurassic World. Speaking of Super Nintendo World, I checked just for funsies to see if they had any reservations available. When I arrived at the park, they did not. However, when I checked a few minutes ago, they did. I made one just so I could screen record it so you guys would know what it looks like, but I also canceled it after that because I've had the pleasure to go to Super Nintendo World several times at this point, and I'd rather give that spot to someone who has not. Plus, uh, I'm trying to decide what my last one or two things are gonna be in this park. I've got a few things in my mind, um, and I'm just gonna go where the spirit of Mario and the Indominus Rex and Draco Malfoy moved me. Picked up a coffee real quick at the Starbucks right here, and now I'm headed to the last showing of the Waterworld show. This is a stunt show themed after the amazing film Waterworld, a critically acclaimed fan favorite. Um, I've actually never seen it, but the stunt show is actually really legit and I've missed it the last couple times I've been here because they only do it a couple times a day. So I was tickled when I looked in the app and saw that there was one late night showing tonight. So we're gonna head and watch this. I said hi. Hi. That's better. Well done. Welcome to the 
Santo. I'm Sage. I need you to lock up the armory, okay? No one's getting in. Hi, I'm Tiger Woods. Hey, who's got my golf ball? Where is it? He's got my golf ball. No, 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 It's okay. We actually need these people. Here, back this. I legitimately think that is an awesome stunt show. Like, maybe Lights, Motors, Action comes close to what I would say. Like, those are the two best stunt shows I've ever seen in the parks. And nothing to do with theme or anything, because I don't know anything about Waterworld. I do like Helen, though. She's pretty awesome. Um, but they literally fly a plane through a wall and land it on the water in front of you. So if you like stunt shows, it's about a 20-minute show. It's kind of funny. And because you're in Universal Hollywood, the cast are stunt actors in shows and movies and they shout them out at the end and there were people from Westworld and The Mandalorian and the MCU and that's just cool too. Just a Hollywood thing. So hi I really highly recommend it as kind of an underrated treat here at Hollywood. Now we have about 30 minutes before my lift will be here to take me to LAX. And if I've got 30 minutes in a Universal theme park, I think you know where I'm going. It's probably surprising to no one that I'm gonna end my night here in Hogsmeade, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. They have the castle light show on Hogwarts like they do in Islands of Adventure. Hello, how are you? How are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> I'm headed into the Hogshead to get myself a warm beverage, and then I'm gonna watch the Hogwarts light show. Just a little moment to finalize this wonderful trip. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. It's because of the Man Fam that we're able to travel to cool places, and it's because of all of your support and all of your watching and following and subscribing and everything that people like Universal recognize us and reach out to us and, and invite us to cover cool things for you. So thank you so much. I cannot tell you how much it means. What other content do you want to see? What other adventures do you want to see? Let us know that in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe. Follow us on social. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been so, so magical. Now go watch the Super Nintendo World video. Bye.